Thank you for joining us for the Ministry of the Word at Redeemed Christian Fellowship in Phoenix, Arizona. We hope the Ministry of the Word will be a blessing to you. Hi, welcome to our Sunday afternoon RCF live stream. We thank you for joining us um, and being here with us mm -hmm. as we get into the Ministering to the Sick manual by Dr. Martinez. Dr. Walter Martinez. <laughs> that felt weird saying it like that. Um, We've been, we've been going through this manual uh, each week, and I'm glad to be back with uh, my sister and my friend because I missed them last week. <laughs> we missed you too. <laughs> um, but we're going to uh, continue in this manual. We're going to pick up on uh, how to minister healing to the sick, and it's, it uh, kind of corresponds with some of the teachings we went through in the Divine Healing Manual, but on a, under a different... Um, uh, uh, understanding like this one is how to minister to people versus mm -hmm. divine healing um, for yourself. Would uh, you like to pray? Sure. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you for your word and we thank you for um, everything that you have to offer us. And we thank you for your healing power. And Lord, just uh, help us uh, learn uh, through um, reading your word. And um, we just thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Uh, God is so good. So like I said, we're going to be teaching on how to minister healing to the sick this week. Uh, not, understand how, not understanding how healing comes has become a hindrance to many. In this chapter, we want to explore the different ways God brings healing to people so that we might be given over to know the ways of God and not just his acts. Um, I believe it's in Psalms 103 uh, where it says uh, that he made his ways known unto Moses, but his acts unto the children of Israel. And, that uh, one time Pastor Walter shared a revelation with that on me and it really stuck out was uh, he just let the children of Israel know his acts. Mm -hmm. They just understood what he did. They didn't understand why he did it. And whereas to Moses, he understood his ways. Yeah. He knew God's ways. And that's uh, the design of this teaching is to, to, the, to reveal the ways of God mm -hmm. to us so that we can have a better understanding of God mm -hmm. and his, his desire to heal us. We have discussed similar methods in the Divine Healing Manual. However, here, we will, here it will be in light of ministering to the sick, like we said earlier. So we're going to talk specifically about the healing anointing today. Um, after Christ's temptation in the wilderness, Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit. And that's really important. The healing anointing is one of the methods used by Jesus to minister to the sick. We're going to read Luke chapter 4, verse 14. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee, and there went out a fame of him through all the region round about. So the word power here is the Greek word dunamis. Strong's translates it as miraculous power or ability. So Jesus returned in the power or in the miraculous power or ability of the Spirit mm -hmm. after he was tempted. Um, in Luke chapter 5, which we'll read in just a second, we, we see this word used in reference to Christ's healing anointing. So we'll read Luke 5, 17. And it came to pass on a certain day as he was teaching that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by, which were come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was present to heal them. So notice that in this portion of scripture, the healing anointing was present, but it took faith to tap into or benefit from the healing anointing. Mm -hmm. Because of the word power, we know that it is in reference to the healing anointing. So what kept the healing anointing from working for the others uh, that we see in verse 21 that were present? Um, the the manual doesn't specifically get into this, but if you read Luke chapter 5 in between 17 and 21, we see that, um, that this is where the man who was trying to get to Jesus, he was lame, he couldn't walk, he was trying to get to Jesus, but couldn't get through the crowd. So they let him down through the roof. And Jesus saw their faith uh, and the great efforts they went to to um, to, re uh, to have him minister to Jesus for healing. They saw Jesus saw their faith and um, he healed. He forgave him of his sins and healed him of his um, disability, his infirmity. <laughs> um, so, uh, according to verse twenty-one, what kept healing the healing anointing from working for the others that were present? It was because they became, or that they came to critique and criticize and not to receive. So they specifically came to critique and criticize Jesus and not to receive. Mm -hmm. So we'll read verse 21. 
And the scribes and the Pharisees began to reason, saying, Who is this which speaketh blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? So we know that they definitely were not there to receive the healing anointing that was present, um, that the man who was let through the roof, he tapped into that, he understood it was present, and he wanted it, and so he went through great efforts to receive it. Mm -hmm. uh, when ministering to the sick, teach them or those who you're ministering to to pull or draw from the anointing by faith yes. um, and this is one thing that um, I learned early on under Pastor Walter is that if I need prayer I can come to I can come to pastor because I know he's anointed by God and I can ask him pray for me mm -hmm. I need help with this area I need I'm not feeling great come pray for me um, and I can draw on that anointing by faith and I can receive my healing by faith and so when you're ministering to people um, you can teach them how to and that's something I was taught to do and so you could teach those who you're ministering to 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 pull on that anointing to draw on that anointing uh, by faith there are those in the body of Christ who minister with a healing anointing it's easier to get healed that way however as in this case the anointing is not always in operation so the anointing was present but it wasn't necessarily in operation until that man drew on it by faith. Yes. Um, if the anointing is not in operation, you can always pull or draw on it by faith. Because it's there, it's present, you can literally draw it, draw from it like an account. You can go to your bank anytime and just make a withdrawal from that. You can make a withdrawal from that healing anointing and pull on it and say, I need this, it's present, I can have it now. Right. You, don't, you don't have to wait for it to be initiated uh, by God. You can draw on it. Okay. If the anointing is there, it cannot resist your faith. The anointing is drawn to faith. It is very important to remember that we are not talking about the anointing in a general sense. We are talking about it in a specific sense. When someone is anointed with healing power, whether it is moving or not, you can make a demand on the anointing and be healed. Again, the anointing cannot resist your faith. We're going to read an example of this. Just a second. This mentality is not presumptuous or arrogance. It is the scripture. Yes, amen. Let's look at Mark chapter 5 concerning the woman with the issue of blood, blood where sh she is a great example of someone who uh, saw after that anointing and received in a great mm -hmm. way. When there were many other people around who could have done the same thing, she was the one who, who made it, who, uh, who made that happen. So Mark chapter 5 verses 25 through 34. And a certain woman, which had an issue of blood twelve years, and had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was nothing bettered, but rather grew worse, when she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind, and touched his garment. For she said, If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and sayest, Who touched me? And he looked round about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came down, came and fell down before him, and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace, and be whole of thy plague. Amen. It is very important to understand that we are talking about someone who ministers under and with a healing anointing. We're not just talking about anyone off the, that's like walking down the street. We're talking about very specifically, Jesus was anointed with the power of the Holy Spirit. And we mm -hmm. saw that in Luke chapter 4. I read that right. <laughs> uh, that he returned in the power of the Spirit. And, uh, and so, obviously, he was anointed with the healing power. Yes. Um, and there are those who are, in our time, anointed with the same power to minister to the sick. And you can make, you can draw on that by faith, that, that anointing by faith. There are times where it's an operation and you don't have to do anything and you just show up and um, you can be healed. Uh, I experienced... Uh, something similar to that where uh, 10 years ago maybe I was at church and I was 
uh, I had a, uh, an infection that was so painful in my body and I just, I was um, at the point of giving up. In fact, I had uh, called my mom and said, mom, stop at the store, get me whatever medicine you can find because I am in so much pain, I am about to give up. And uh, be before mom showed up, Pastor Walter walked in, and I've shared a little bit about this before, but Pastor Walter walked in and um, he could sense that there was something wrong and he said, let me pray for you. He prayed for me. I didn't come to him in this situation and say, pray for me. I, I need that healing anointing. He came to me and he prayed for me. And I was like, again, giving up, <laughs> giving up everything at that point. Um, and within a matter of minutes, the infection was completely gone and I was completely made whole. No pain left in my body at all. Uh, my countenance changed, everything had changed. That wasn't my faith necessarily that drew on that. That was the healing anointing and operation that Pastor Walter uh, yielded to and ministered to me through that. Uh, um, I, I've said this before, but recently I experienced that again where that same infection was trying to come back into my body. And this time I knew I had been healed. I knew I had experienced complete divine healing under the healing anointing. Um, and so this time when I uh, approached Pastor Walter, I, I, I did it more under that faith pulling on that anointing that mm -hmm. was present to heal me before. Um, and I, re again, received my, my healing, again, completely. Uh, so they're just different. Again, the healing anointing that is present, you can pull on by faith, and that's what we're talking about specifically. <clears throat> so faith on its own can produce the same results. You can, you can be in faith on your own um, and get healing on your own by faith. Uh, however, when the healing anointing is involved, healing appears to come easier and quicker. You can, again, rely on the faith of the person as well that, you're, that is anointed with the healing power. Notice that when she touched him, verse 30 says that Jesus immediately knew in himself that virtue had gone out of him. So the word virtue is the Greek word dunamis that has been translated power. In the verses that we've been studying, it's the same Greek word power. However, this time it's translated uh, virtue. Mm -hmm. um, in the in verse thirty four, Jesus says, "Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole." Um, so, real quick, I wanted to go back. We just touched on the word virtue, and I, I don't want to forget. Um. Uh, let me find. Jesus knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him. And so again, I wanted to emphasize that that word virtue is dunamis, which is the miraculous power and ability. So Jesus knew that that miraculous power and ability had gone out of him um, and into that woman. Mm -hmm. So in verse 34, Jesus says, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. She pulled on the healing anointing by faith. Here again, we see the healing anointing was present but not an operation. Yet this woman pulled on the anointing by faith and received her healing. Um, so when you're ministering again to people, teach people to make a demand on the anointing by faith. Again, this is not presumption or arrogance. It is scriptural to pull on the anointing like the man who was let down through the roof in the book of Luke chapter five or the woman with the issue of blood. As we have said, tapping into the healing anointing by faith brings better and quicker results. Now you can believe God to be healed by faith and get healed. Yet, when there is a healing anointing present and you learn to tap into and pull on it, you get better and quicker results because your faith doesn't have to fight through your mind, emotions, and circumstances. When, mm -hmm. So in other words, when you're, um, when you're believing God on your own for, for your healing um, by faith, you're going to have to contend with your mind. You're going to have to contend with your emotions. You're going to have to contend with the circumstances, how your body feels uh, or what you're going through or what you see with your eyes. Uh, and, and that's okay too. But when you pull on that anointing by faith, you have assistance, supernatural assistance, to be able to get, to be able to receive your healing. Um, I may be somewhat bypassing those other areas. Uh, there's still a fight of faith to contend with even after you've uh, received your healing. You don't ever want to drop your faith. Another thing that we can learn from our text in Mark chapter 5 is found in verse 29 where it says that she felt in her body she was healed of her plague. So we're going to read Mark 5, 20. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. So the word felt here is the Greek word gnosko, and it means to know. She was made aware of and perceived that she was healed. 
which means that the healing anointing can be perceived as tangible. She physically felt it tangibly. <laughs> Spiritual perceptions can be very tangible to our senses, although they're not often understood, they can be experienced and felt. The healing anointing is power, and this power can be felt. The miraculous power and ability can be felt. It's like sticking your finger in a light socket. You, can, you can't see the power, but you can certainly feel it. I once heard it said that what electricity is to light, the anointing is to healing. And I know that you said you wanted to share a testimony that you had experienced. Yes. Okay, so when I was pregnant with Hillary, I was 13 weeks, and um, all of a sudden I started having symptoms that I was about to miscarry. So I called you up. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty It was pretty traumatic at the time. but um, So I called you up, and you're like, I'm going to call Pastor right away. So you and Pastor had met me at the hospital, and I remember pastor stood behind my bed and I was laying there and he put his hand on my head and I just felt that anointing it just went through my body and right to where she was at mm -hmm. and I knew right away that she was going to be okay and everything thank you everything was going to be fine mm -hmm. and um it just I just remember that feeling and if you can picture it in your mind I had this picture of um, like this tunnel just kind of like with this like fluorescent I don't know like mist I guess <laughs> kind of just like flow right through me and then just kind of like accumulate in my lower abdomen mm -hmm. and just kind of surround her mm -hmm. And um, the doctors, they we did a bunch of tests, ultrasounds, and they they didn't know. They had no idea what was happening. And um, of course, she was born and she's healthy. And <laughs> <laughs> Amen. but it just <clears throat> to feel and to know, it, it's unexplainable and it's so supernatural and amazing mm -hmm. to know that these things still happen. Right, it's real. Yeah. Right, it's real. And, and like you said, you're emphasizing that you <coughs> felt it. You physically felt the tangible anointing flowing through your body and yeah. healing um, your uh, baby that you were carrying. Um, like, the power of God is real. The power of God is present and still available for healing. He wants more so. I've said this before. He wants to heal people more than people want to be healed themselves. Uh, I think a lot of times there there's a certain... Um, self-righteous feeling to being uh, sick in some people's minds where they <laughs> yeah, <I'm laughs> they have to carry carry this burden yeah. uh, however that is not mm -hmm. what God wants that is not his desire for uh, humanity uh, he he made available healing to us through his son um, in a in a in a in a very um, it's a hard way to think about how he yeah. how he made it available for us, but it's miraculous. I think yes. people think that. Or what would Pastor say? Scripture and verse, please. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you won't find one. No, <laughs> you won't find one. Um, you could twist things around. You yes, can, you could put words in anyone's mouth. That's right. Um, God is good. Amen. So faith is everything, and faith can um, cannot be acquired without the word. You you can't have faith without the word. The pastor was teaching on touching on this a little bit today. Uh, Faith cannot come without the Word. The Word is everything. We need the Word mm -hmm. um, in order to have faith. We would do well to teach others about the healing anointing so that faith may come and that people may learn to tap in and draw on the anointing when it's present. If someone is anointed with healing power, then the healing anointing is always present. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's an operation. But by faith, you can plug into and draw the healing power of God into your body and be healed. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, there, there are times uh, where um, I've just decided I'm done dealing with certain things and um, I'm ready to uh, rely on that healing anointing that flows in our pastor. And I'll come to him and say, Pastor, pray for me. Mm -hmm. Lay hands on me. <laughs> and I've received my healing that way. Uh, the, it doesn't necessarily mean that the healing anointing was 
operating in past Walter in that specific moment. I, I called on him and asked him to lay hands on me, but uh, I was able to draw on it by faith, uh, and it and it worked. It was there. I'm yeah, trying to really say yeah. that uh, Pastor Walter said in his, in his notes right here that the healing anointing is, is always present. Mm -hmm. So you're always able to draw on it. Yeah. Whether it's operating or not is all I was trying to to say in yeah. my own words, which don't turn out as good as Pastor Walter's book. <laughs> well, I love that how like God, he provided this for us. It, mm -hmm. Like He can choose one when he wants to operate and just have that that healing and operation and available but he also provided a way for us if it's not flowing that way for us if we need our healing we can draw on it mm -hmm. we don't have to wait right so i love that we don't have to wait you don't have to I wait till you come to church on sunday <laughs> <laughs> you have it right <laughs> i love that that's good uh I, yeah i i agree that there's so many things that God has made available to us and Pastor Walter was saying this morning if you don't know what's available to you you can't utilize it right. if you don't know that uh, you have $200 in your suitcase you, uh, you can't pull it out and spend it Right. so if you don't know that uh, the healing anointing is available to you you can't you can't make a withdrawal on that and use it yeah and you know a lot of people are like well how do you know healings you know I don't I'm sure everybody's experienced it but, but when Pastor or other people have prayed up for me on certain areas of my body like when pastor prayed for my stomach you can feel the heat mm -hmm. you know you can feel you can't tell me that that's just a coincidence that you know right you know obviously that's god's healing anointing i mean right. it's real you right. feel it and you're like whoa you know you feel like this heat just come on you in right. that one area right you know what else are you going to say that is right so. and uh and then you're healed obviously exactly after that happens <laughs> exactly I, uh, like I said that you can you can't like you were talking about you can't see it but you can feel it yes um, another way you know is it's in the word yes yeah <laughs> it's mm -hmm. in the word uh, and that's the more sure way to explain to someone that healing is available for you is in the word it's Amen. in the word, in the word. Um, so the healing anointing in operation when the healing anointing is in operation it can become extremely easy to be healed although faith is always helpful there are those times that people are healed and not even sure how it happened, indicating they were not operating by mm -hmm. faith. And we saw that in scripture. We're going to read Luke chapter 6, verses 17 through 19. And he came down with them and stood in the plain in the company of his disciples and a great multitude of people out of all Judea, Jerusalem, and from the sea coast of Tyre I don't, and Sidon, I don't know, which came to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. And they that were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed. And the whole multitude sought to touch him, for there went virtue out of him and healed them all. So notice that the whole multitude sought to touch Jesus, and that virtue or healing or the healing power of God went out of him and healed him all. Here again, the word virtue um, that came out of him is the Greek word dunamis in reference to the healing anointing. Mm -hmm. So notice that it healed them all. It came out of him because the anointing was in operation. So the Greek rendering for um, there went out, which we read in verse 19, is one word, and it means to come out of, to depart, and even escape. So the idea is that the anointing to heal was flowing out of him. Mm -hmm. It was escaping out of him. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was a good word. Mark six fifty four through 56. And when they were come out of the ship, straightway they knew him. And ran through that whole region round about, and began to carry about in beds those that were sick, where they heard he was. And whithersoever he entered into villages or cities or country, they laid the sick in the streets and besought him that they might touch, if it were but the border of his garment. And as many as touched him were made whole. Here, as many as touched the border of his garment were made whole. Mark six fifty four through fifty six is in reference to the healing anointing in operation. So notice how the anointing was flowing through our Lord's garment. Not only will the anointing flow through cloth, but it can be absorbed in cloth, such as we see in Acts 19, 11 through 12. And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul, so that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons, and the diseases departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. So we see that they brought handkerchiefs to Paul, the anointing was absorbed into that into those handkerchiefs, and they brought it to the sick, and the um, diseases departed from them. Mm -hmm. 
uh, it is very important to understand that the healing anointing can be absorbed by cloth if the one praying for or touching the cloth is anointed with God's healing power. Uh, to learn more about this specific um, concept, you could um, read Pastor Walter's uh, The Anointing Manual, <laughs> uh, available at Hearing Heart Multimedia Bookstore. Uh, uh, so <laughs> but in conclusion, when ministering to people with and under an anointing, it is very important to instruct and teach them how to pull on the anointing by faith if the anointing is not in operation but yet present. Again, if it's present, then the person who's anointed with the healing power of God, uh, even if they're not operating in that anointing in that specific moment, the anointing is still there, still present. The Holy Spirit has not left them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he is still working in them and can work through them if you pull on Him by faith. Um, if the anointing is, op is an operation, then teach them to expect a healing and a cure. Expectation is an anticipation, a close watch. To anticipate something is to be looking for something to happen. Uh, Christmas is coming. Kids are anticipating Christmas morning mm -hmm. that they're going to walk out and they're going to be blessed with lots of presents and gifts. That's right. We can be that same um, excited expectation and anticipation when it comes to the healing anointing. Yes. When you know that the man of God is anointed with the healing power, you can have that excited anticipation mm -hmm. when you approach him by faith mm -hmm. or when you know he's operating and, and uh, it's even easier on you if you know he's already operating in that healing anointing and you can draw on that and expect that power <laughs> to come out of him and into your body and yes. heal your body. You don't Amen. have to wait once a year either. You don't have to wait <laughs> once a year. You can draw on it at any time. Amen. Uh, with expectation and anticipation. Mm, amen. So we see this when the multitude came to, to Jesus. They came to hear and be healed of their diseases. They came with an anticipation and an expectation. Mm. We also see the power of expectation in Acts chapter 3 with the man at the gate beautiful. We're going to read uh, verses 2 through 8. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful, to ask alms of them, that entered into the temple, who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an alms. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Hmm. And he took that him by the right hand and lifted him up and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength and he leaping up stood and walked and entered with them into the temple walking and leaping and praising God. Uh, notice in verse 5 he said that he gave heed unto them he paid attention to them and mm -hmm. he was expecting to receive something of them so he yeah. expected to receive something from them and he did. The thing we must understand with the healing anointing is that you must find someone who operates in or under a healing anointing. Then in order for you to tap in, there must be faith for healing present. If the anointing is in operation, by raising the level of expectation in the recipient, healing comes much easier because of the healing anointing. There are those times when the healing anointing is in operation where little or no faith is needed, such as the man who was healed at the pool of Bethesda uh, that was in John chapter 5. He didn't even know who Jesus was. He wasn't applying his faith to receive healing. Mm -hmm. um, this facet of the anointing cannot be dependent on, though. Um, it works as the Spirit wills. So, you, so you're so you not going to make it work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's going to work as the Spirit wills to fulfill God's purpose and plan, possibly to stir the faith of his people. However, if you want to make full use of the healing anointing, help people get into faith and raise their level of expectation through the preaching and teaching of the word. Um, and we're about out of time. Was there anything that you wanted to add? You know, I was just thinking, and, and it ties in with the message this morning, but like Pastor said, you don't know what you have until you know what you have. You know, mm -hmm. you don't know if you've got, you know, if you don't, if you have a million dollars in a bank account, but you don't have access to that bank account, you're not going to know that you have a million dollars. Mm -hmm. So um, we have such a wonderful gift 
with the healing power that God gave us. And so I just encourage me and anybody, if you don't know too much about how the healing power works, get into this manual, get into the scriptures, because you need to know that we, you have this, so mm -hmm. then you can pull on it and use it. Amen. So. That's good. Do you want to add anything? No, I'm good. <laughs> That's really good. I appreciate that. Um, we love you all. We pray that you have a blessed week, and uh, we will see you Thursday. Thank you for joining us today. If the ministry of the Word has been a blessing to you, please consider contributing to the work of the ministry at www.redeemedcf.breezechms.com forward slash give forward slash online. You can also text to give by texting the amount you would like to give to 602-962-3848. If you have a testimony of how the ministry of the Word has been a blessing to you, please send us a message on one of our social media platforms. We would love to hear from you. Thank you for your continued support of the work here at Redeemed Christian Fellowship.